Welcome to Italy and the launch of the Skoda Enyaq Coupe. Now you're used to the Enyaq and so not much has changed since then, but they've put on a completely different rear end in this car. And there's a good few other details we have to get through as well. So I'm just gonna start rambling off some numbers at you because things have changed because this one here is the RS and that puts out 220 kilowatts, 460 newton meters of torque and not to 100 kilometers an hour or not 62 and 6.5 seconds with a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour now that changes things for electric cars from skoda it also changes what you think as an suv so if you look at this car it's quite large it shouldn't be a sports car but it's an rs model so that's pretty cool but more affordably we are going to get the skoda enyaq 60 and we're going to get the skoda enyaq 80 and the 80x so x is four wheel drive where you see 80 it's standard rear wheel drive and they've moved the motors to the rear as well but let's just have a look along the side of this one first and see what happens with the coupe version so you can see around the front it is basically the same as any of the other Enyaqs but the change starts about here now they put in a big glass sunroof in this car as well but then once you get back to this point it starts to taper off into a coupe line that coupe line changes how the car looks on the back think of tesla model x in size but tesla model y in shape it kind of looks it does look a little tesla look and there's nothing wrong with it in this color it looks fantastic in the blue there's an orange as well it looks absolutely brilliant but color choices wise this is going to be the bravest color you've ever chosen because you've got to sell it on eventually now the biggest problem of course for scott at the moment is getting supply but this look looks brilliant and this will be coming as a look into your showrooms with 20 and 21 inch alloys on it as well so it's going to make it look exceptionally different so you can see that coupe line makes quite a big hatchback on this car in actual fact it's a 570 liter boot in just this space here so it's it's huge and in skoda that means you get proper uh, shopping bag hooks you get a proper sort of drop the seat line you get this kind of cargo net that's on the top of it as well and your charge cables have a specific point in the boot so they're really really tidy over to one side skoda tend to think of little things like that and that's where the simply clever thing came from and that's why i tend to give an easy pass on this you even get a little bit of space under here if you've got more cabling and more stuff to go underneath as well tons and tons of space loads of room for family stuff 12 volt sockets in the boot you can't really go wrong let's have a look on the inside so on the inside things remain really clever as usual with skoda they've updated their software they've made it really user friendly it's still a touchscreen, so okay we still have to deal with pressing buttons on a touchscreen to make heating happen but it's pretty straightforward seating position is absolutely brilliant tiny screen in front of you to tell you what speed you're doing relevant information and then these seats and things are all made from sustainable things so a lot of these seats are made from recycled plastic bottles it's all re re uh, recycled or recyclable things that they try and make it from now they do still have leather options and all that if you want to do that that's fine but anything you want to do here they're talking about vegan stuff i don't know how realistic that's going to be but the interior of these are absolutely lovely very family friendly as well you will easily fit five people in these cars tell you what we'll do next we're going to go for a spin in both models and see which one's best So here I am trundling along through the hills to find out what this car drives like. Roads here in Italy are confusing. Sometimes they're in fantastically flat form and when they are, when they get themselves in a crispy little line around the mountainside, they can feel awesome. But 99% of roads in Italy are actually garbage and they just bounce you around the place. They don't have any runoff, they're just... <laughs> <laughs> it's a place that loves the car but the, it challenges a car like no other country uh, by the way i'm also wearing um, skoda glasses see cool aren't they anyway this is the skoda enyaq 80 uh it's a two-wheel drive one as well um there's four-wheel drive versus this there's the 60 version which is also two-wheel drive all rear-wheel drive under two-wheel drive the four-wheel drive version is going to be standard in rs mode i'll be driving the rs in a minute so stay with me for that one if you like this kind of video hit the subscribe button i am here because you are subscribing babies that's the way it is um this version of the car is probably the one i would plump for unless i want a little bit more performance it would very much depend on the price walk between this and the rs rs gets you a little bit more uh, torque a little bit more horsepower a little bit more get up and go than the standard one does 
but if the price walk is huge, they don't visually look that different. Uh, in terms of performance, you know what? You know the little bow on the bottom of your back? It's called the coccyx. When you accelerate in the rear wheel drive ones, it feels like a kick in the coccyx. It just, it pushes up underneath you. It's not, not punching you in the back. It's, it pushes up from underneath. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird like that. There's some really bad undulations you can feel there. And they are really bad. Now I'm hitting the brakes in hard into a corner here. It's, it's a strange feeling to be out in what you could class as a performance car, but it's actually electric. And in a way that kind of confuses me how it handles and drives and goes because the car feels like I should be chucking it into corners and turning left and turning right and pulling into corners and drifting because it's all rear wheel drive. And then in the back of it, I'm going, well, I have only 91% of my battery left because I've been driving like an idiot, you know? <laughs> This is the RS model of the same car. Uh, and so Skoda have now brought out an electric RS, which is the first time we have seen that come out from Skoda. This was unusual. So it's been a, a very interesting launch um, to see what Skoda's doing. It's now, you have to remember, this isn't a new car. This is a modification of the car. So uh, to bring out a coupe version is just unusual. I mean, we're looking at a large SUV. Like this is not a small car. This is a big car. Uh, and now it's got a big boot, <laughs> 500 and something liters, 570 liters, I think. Like it's got all the ingredients we need for a good family car. And then they fired in the RS. <laughs> it's, it's not what I expected Skoda to do. But then Skoda rarely do what I expected to do. Uh, heads up display has this virtual thing when the sat nav is set that tells you how far away uh, corners are and all it's actually pretty good I would say if you're looking should you spec it or not spec it if it's an option for you in your territory I wouldn't bother spec it really would it's cool it's a nice feature and all but it's probably not worth really you're not going to use it as much as you think it is because it's only compatible with Apple CarPlay as well. So when you put on your Apple Maps, it'll show you the same thing or the system that's built in here, but it won't work with Google Maps. Uh, and so it's not really, if you're into Google or Waze or anything like that, forget about it. Forget about it. <clears throat> I'm feeling very Italian, man, Italian. Hey, you move with the car. That, that's what you need to learn. That's how you speak Italian. You speak Italian with your hands. And he said, grazie, ne se prego. Right, we have modified mod sport. We don't care about any remote because it's an RS and we want to drive it hard. Hard, I tell you, hard. Let's start off with, go back where we were, sat now so we don't get lost. Let's start off with acceleration. So straight line, we're in hard mode, we're in sport mode, we're good. We go for D, go. Yep, that's a lot of pressure. Oh yeah, not 60 times, somewhere in around a five something seconds mark. <coughs> which I think is pretty good for any car. To grunt out of corners is quite nice. This is the four wheel drive. So driven a rear wheel drive, driven the, the Skoda Enyaq IV80, the IV80X, and now I'm in the RS model. And I think, I think the RS has more pressure, more, more, just feels like it's got more grunt. Uh, coming away from corners when you put your foot down. It's quite a nice feeling. The turn in is crisp, the same as it is on the other ones. So you're not gonna get any more of a turn in feature to your car. Uh, if you pick the ADX and the RS, it feels pretty much the same on the turn in. It's, I think, I think Skoda, you missed out on a noise. And I say that, and I'm very conscious of the fact of uh, BMW, and I'm saying Skoda and BMW in the same breath, have made their cars make noise. 
in the cabin, not outside. Uh, in the cabin, they make this lovely little kind of, it's made by Hans Zimmer. It's quite a cool sound. And I think we're kind of missing it now, the RS. I would like a little noise. <clears throat> the grunt as you pull out corners, like, yeah, goes. <laughs> oh, it does want to. It does want to drift a little bit. I have to say, there is a little bit of drifty feel to the whole thing. And so what we really must remember here as well as I am driving an electric car. So the electric cars can be performancey, but most people would buy an electric car with the thought of how far the car will go. So if you want to go far, buy the Skoda 80, the, the uh, Enyaq IV80. Right, rear wheel drive, motors on the rear wheel drive, uh, so all the battery packs underneath is normal. And you'll get probably the best range out at 80. Italian tractors are small. Hello. If you want to have a sure-footed sort of feel to it, maybe not go as far, but maybe you want to tow a bit more. You want to, maybe you're driving up snowy lanes or something in winter time or whatever. Let's go to Inyak 80X is your next step up. And then from there, you're into RS, which is this one here, which will give you uh, more of a performancey vibe. And there is quite a bit of performancey vibe, even turning into this corner here. The car holds that corner really rather nice. You do feel the weight of the battery in the center without a shadow of a doubt, that is definitely there. But it does, cause this is a crap Italian road, if I'm honest with you, this is, Pretty rubbish. It's the kind of road you'd find outside an Ernie. How are you, Mrs? Oh, the pods are your feet. Oh, she wants to just pull straight on there. The four wheel drive cuts in very well. It is very well composed for, for an electric car. So I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to blow smoke up your hole here and tell you that electric cars drive better or any, any better than any other sort of petrol powered car where the weight of the engine is out the front over the front wheels and you got a rear wheel drive going on so they always drive a bit better but this doesn't drive half bad for an electric car and what i do like about the enyaq is that when you want to you can just go back into your mode there select comfort and the car will waft on for you uh, and that performance is tamed and the car feels pliant on the road uh, you can spec special suspension for this car which specs it up again adaptive suspension uh, i don't know if i'd bother with that in ireland if i'm honest with you it made it very expensive vineyard wine red red wine a little drop of chianti now and a bit of liver be all good and a few fava beans anyway um Lovely Italy is among us and I'm really enjoying my trip here with Skoda. It's been a brilliant trip. If you want to be part of that trip, please hit the subscribe button and drive the channel on. Drive it on. Up to 100,000 subscribers would be really good. I'd love to have you aboard for that time. If you fancy, you can also support the channel financially by going over to Patreon and being one of the cool dudes of the Patreon group over there, or channel memberships, or even just a direct donation by PayPal if you want to, it's up to you, don't really mind. Uh, but none of those are relevant without the subscribers. The subscribers, the ones who comment and like and share and subscribe are the real generals, and the ones that watch this far into it, this far into the show, are the real kings of everything, because you stick it out to the end and we love you. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna continue my little spin through the hills of Florence. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. I hope you look after yourself. I will be back on the Sunday service as normal very soon. Um, but right now we have loads of things to do on Sundays. And of course it's Patrick's weekend this weekend at Leicester Bank Hollis. So you'll find me on, and I hope this is still relevant to you, but you will find me on Middles 103 on Patrick's Day and the day after. I'm doing my own little kind of two hour slot on the radio show there. And I'd love to have you aboard for that. Live radio, a bit of a crack. Um, and come along. Come along and join in the fun. You'll have great cracking and you'll have a lovely time with me. Thank you very much for watching. And until the next time, I'll see you on the far side.